Hey folks, I, I was just going over some of the cool models that I've already built in SketchUp for iPad. When I think about some of the most con confusing concepts in SketchUp for iPad, one of the things that comes to mind is the, uh, the old groups first component arguments. Because it's so important to save space when you get into the kind of tight but mobile interface of the iPad that you really have to have your wits about you when you're strategically planning your models. And a big part of any of that is going to be uh, the whole idea of groups versus components. When do you use one? When do you use another? So um, I'm not going to use this one, but I put together this very short thing. It's part of the, the uh, course that I teach in SketchUp for iPad. And I think it does a pretty good job of explaining why components, why groups, when do you use them, what are the advantages. So let's take a look, and uh, I'll look forward to seeing your comments in the, uh, in the description below. Oh, and uh, by the way, this is the actual model that will be in this example. And if you want to download that facade and uh, draw along with this uh, YouTube video, that link will also be in the description below right at the top. I want to look now at something very, what I find very, very subtle and difficult to remember. But it's the difference between a group and a component. So I'm back in my scenes. I've got my north and south view set up. And... I want to go into tags and turn off that background north shape, okay? Now let's bring this a little closer. I'll use the move tool to move it around and I'll use the magnifying glass to zoom in. Now let's look at that difference between groups and shapes, okay? So we're starting the window layer. We have our north shape layer and that's working great. And we start, we're going to start all of these complicated windows and turn them into their own group. Okay. So I'll start with the rectangle tool and so far so good. It snaps right to those lines. Beautiful job. Now I could continue drawing windows, but I don't want to do that. I want to make one repeating component. Okay. So I'm going to hit the back arrow up here and get out of that. Now I'll go to the selection tool and you remember how we select all of the things in an action. We triple tap one, two, three, and then down below the context menu, we have the option of turning that into a group. So let's do that. Okay. Now where the confusion comes in is that those three small blocks are right beside three separated blocks and it's selected and while it's selected I can also blow it up again so it's no longer a group but if I want to make it a group again I can tap this all right so I do want it to be a group but I want to work on that and I want to turn one window in that group into a component so I'll go back to the selection tool and I'll tap once, nothing happens. I'll tap twice to open the group and make, make it active and ready to be edited. Now I'm going to tap twice more. Okay. So I'm in group mode. I tap twice to get the group ready to be edited. Now I'm going to tap twice on just this side. And watch what happens. That same option comes up. It looks like everything's the same. But now if I tap these three boxes, notice that they're closed. They used to be blown apart, indicating that the group could be blown apart. But now it's slightly different. And if I tap that, it says that it's ready to create a component. And that's what I wanted. Now we'll practice that, but let's keep going for the moment. Now I'm going to scribble that out with this remarkable pencil capability. And now I'm going to call that window. Let's X that again. I call it bedroom window one. There we have it. Bedroom window one. And now I'll double tap again to activate that component and I'll come in here and I'll use the offset tool and I'll draw 
the sash around that window, okay? Now, I, I don't need to be more accurate than this, but I'll, just for practice, that's called two inches, okay? And there is that. So that window is now a component. And actually, let's do the same thing over on the other side. Let's make it a component. And let's call it, first of all, I'll get rid of that. And let's call it bedroom window two, okay, even though they are of the same piece. And now I'll go into the selection tool again and tap until I get it to activate. Now I'll use the offset tool again. And this time, let's imagine that we're using expensive German windows and that the sash is a little bit bigger. Let's call that one 3.5 inches, shall we? So they look a little bit different and they indicate that something's going on. We don't have to be any more exact than that right now. Now I can go back to the selection and tap out of that entire world of that window, okay? Now remember, that's still a group. And all I have to do is tap on it again and the whole group comes alive. But remember, it's a component also. So here we go. We're now gonna copy that window down here and then ultimately over to the other elevation as well. But let's start with this copy. So I go to the Move tool, which is right here. I indicate that I want to add to it when I move. I want to duplicate it while I move. I'm going to make it a little bigger so we can see what we're doing. And I'm going to make sure I tap on the sill line of this and move it right down to the sill line here. Okay. Remember, I can use axes locks if I want to, but I think this will, the guidelines will do a good job for me too. So here we go. All of that is activated and I'll pull that down. It snaps right to those guidelines in that wonderful way. And we are set. Now, the last part of this lesson is to indicate why this is a component. So let's tap on this again. We'll double tap to get into the group. We'll tap again to get into the component on this side. That was another double tap. Now I'll tap and let's use the eraser to erase each of these jams that we put in. Okay, and notice as we do that those same jams disappear down here. Okay, so I'll go back to the selection tool. I'll select it and let's say we put in a smaller offset this time or maybe it's an even bigger offset and sure enough that same thing shows up down here. So that is the difference between a group and a component in SketchUp for iPad. A difference no doubt you're all familiar with from the desktop SketchUp but showing you how you do that with all these different commands this time. So that's what I've got in, in terms of uh, groups versus components. If you have any specific questions, uh, uh, put them in the comments below. And otherwise, I hope you'll take a look at this next video and, and stay tuned because there is going to be this larger group of videos coming about how do you actually get real work done in SketchUp for iPad and really making the case for why it's such a powerful new manifestation of this program that we all know and love. So uh, stay tuned and I'll, I'll see you soon.